I'm sure there was a time when your teacher asked the class to draw a picture of the sun. You eagerly grabbed your crayons and started drawing. And what you drew was a big round circle colored bright yellow. Comment with the sun emoji if this happened at least once in your lifetime. Physically speaking, the sun is classified as a yellow star, and we know we wouldn't be here if it didn't exist. Scientists have always wondered if the presence of a star like a sun is a necessary condition to develop life as we know it on a planet orbiting around it. But as soon as they started studying exoplanets, they realized there could be a bunch of star-planet configurations with the potential to host extraterrestrial living organisms. For example, GJ1002 is a relatively cool red dwarf, and its habitable zone and the two exoplanets around it are much closer to it than the Earth is to the Sun. On the other hand, we know that in general, it is really hard for life to develop on a random planet around a big blue star. So what would have happened if the Sun was of a different color than it actually is, namely if it was a different type of star? Would it be easy for us to live on Earth? But most importantly, would we even be here? Keep watching the video to find out. The Sun's Real Colors First of all, let's try to understand the Sun's real colors. It is yellow, right? I mean, everybody knows that. Or is it? What I'm trying to say is, if the Sun is yellow, then why is the sunset red, orange, and sometimes even purple? Well, this depends on mainly two factors, our eyes and the Earth's atmosphere. Let's pretend for a moment we lived in a world without an atmosphere and to be watching the sun in the sky at 3 p.m. during summer. What we would see would be a white object. You don't believe me? Well, wait until I tell you this. According to physics, we should be seeing a green sun. Here's why. The sun emits light over a whole range of wavelengths, each corresponding to a color. In fact, it does so in all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, apart from gamma rays. However, the emission is stronger in certain wavelengths and weaker in others. This is a property that actually all stars have, and astronomers actually find it really useful, because among all the spectrum, there will be a precise wavelength, namely a precise color, whose emission will be stronger than others. We call peak wavelength the wavelength where this happens for a certain type of star. For instance, the sun is peaked in the green. This peak wavelength is really important because it also generally determines an object's apparent color. Astronomers know cooler stars appear red and hotter stars appear blue with orange, yellow, and white stars in between. So according to physics only, we should be able to spot the sun as a green disk in the sky, but our eyes actually make it white. The human eye doesn't perceive light by averaging the various colors of the spectrum together so a very slight excess of green light doesn't look green to the human eye, it looks white. The sun would have to emit only green light for our eyes to perceive it as green. This means the actual color of the sun in absence of atmosphere according to our eyes would be white. If we take our beautiful atmosphere and consider it in the equation, we would then see it as a yellow bright disk as we actually do. The cause of the color change for the atmosphere is Rayleigh scatter. Basically, when sunlight enters the Earth's atmosphere, it encounters tiny particles like oxygen, nitrogen, and other molecules that make up the air we breathe. Now, when sunlight hits these tiny particles, it gets scattered in different directions. But here's the cool part. The shorter wavelengths of light, like blue and violet, get scattered more than the longer wavelengths, like red and orange. After a lot of scattering, the shorter wavelengths are mostly gone, leaving the yellowish and reddish longer wavelengths. This is what turns white into yellow. But this also means that during sunrise and sunset, when the sun is lower in the sky, the sunlight has to travel through more of our atmosphere, making it more likely to encounter these tiny particles and scatter more of these shorter wavelengths, giving us those amazing hues of oranges, pinks, and purples. So there you have it. Next time you see a dazzling sunrise or sunset, you can impress your friends with your knowledge of Rayleigh scattering. In typical viewing conditions, there are no green, cyan, indigo, or violet stars. Yellow dwarfs such as the sun are white. Red dwarfs are a deep shade of yellow, orange, and brown dwarfs do not literally appear brown but hypothetically would appear dim red or gray-black to a nearby observer. Anyway, let's forget for a moment all about the compliances that might arise considering the way our eyes perceive colors 
and how the presence of the atmosphere influences it. And let's consider everything just from the physical point of view. This is convenient because astronomers all over the centuries managed to develop a classification of stars based on their temperature or color. According to this classification, as we already mentioned, the hottest stars are blue while the coolest are red. So what would happen if the sun was, let's say, a red star? If the sun was a red star? Well, it depends on what type of red star. According to astronomers, three types of them actually exist – red dwarfs, red giants, and red supergiants. The first ones are way cooler than the sun and way smaller. Imagine the sun is a bright yellow beach ball in the sky. But what if it shrunk down to the size of a tiny red dot? That's what it would look like if we orbited a red dwarf star, the smallest type of star. But don't get too excited because the lack of heat from the star would cause our world to freeze over. On the other hand, if the sun was a red giant, this would have enormous and disastrous consequences for Earth. Our oceans would evaporate and our atmosphere would be blown away, leaving us with a dry and hostile world. But here's the true scariest part. Our sun will eventually become a red giant, a massive star that can inflate up to 200 times its current size. Therefore, the Earth is doomed. This is our fate. It's not something that you have to worry about, though, because astronomers say this will happen some 6 billion years from now when the sun would have exhausted the hydrogen fuel in its core. But things can always get worse. Red supergiants are even bigger than red giants and can be a thousand times larger than the sun. If the Earth orbited one of these stars at the same distance as the Sun, we would be swallowed up and destroyed. However, if we were in the habitable zone of the star where it's not too hot and not too cold, we could survive. But be ready for some extreme temperature changes, as these type of stars are known to have big fluctuations in brightness. So we learned a lot about the future of the solar system if the Sun was a red star. Now before getting to know what would happen if the Sun was blue, let me give you some examples of well-known red stars in the red giant or supergiant phase. Aldebaran, Mira, and Betelgeuse. Aldebaran, also known as the Eye of the Bull, is one of the brightest stars in the night sky and is located in the constellation Taurus. It is a red giant star that is about 44 times larger than the Sun. It also has a companion star, but we cannot see it with the naked eye. Mira, also known as the Wonderful or Surprising Star, is a variable star located in the constellation Cetus. It was one of the first variable stars to be discovered and has a pulsating brightness that changes over a period of about 332 days. Mira is also the first variable star to have been observed with a telescope. Betelgeuse, located in the constellation Orion, is a red supergiant star that is about 1,000 times larger than the Sun. It is one of the largest known and if it were to replace our Sun, its surface would extend beyond the orbit of Jupiter. Betelgeuse is also one of the closest red supergiants to Earth, at a distance of about 640 light years. It is expected to explode as a supernova in the next million years, which will be visible from Earth and will likely be one of the most spectacular astronomical events of our time. And what about you? Can you name another red star? Let us know in the comments. If the Sun was a blue star, now let's change stellar class and imagine a world where the sun is a bright, dazzling blue star. You step outside and the heat is unlike anything you've ever felt before. It's like stepping into a fiery oven that's hotter than hot. The air is filled with plasma, sizzling and crackling with energy. If the sun was a blue star like Rigel or Eta Carina, everything on Earth would change. We would no longer see the beautiful orange sunsets that we're used to. Instead, the sky would be painted in vibrant shades of blue. Cool, one might say. Well, no, the trade-off would be deadly. The intense heat and UV radiation would be too much for us to handle. Our bodies would be burnt to ashes in seconds if we stepped outside. And even if we were somehow resistant to the heat, our vision would suffer immensely. The blue light would mess with our beauty sleep, leading to health problems like high blood pressure and heart failure. The plants around us would also suffer. Some would grow smaller, thicker, and have darker leaves, while others would die off completely. We might be left with lettuce, spinach, and potatoes to sustain us, but that would be the least of our worries. But it's not all bad news. This wouldn't last long. A blue star like Eta Carina has a live-fast-die-young lifestyle. 
It's already nearing the end of its fuel supply and could explode into a supernova within the next 100,000 years. Similarly, the chaos and destruction caused by the blue sun wouldn't last forever. In any case, fasten your seatbelts, because I'm about to blow your mind with some facts about these badass blue stars. Allow me to show you this picture. Here's what's happening on Eta Carina right now. The star appears to be surrounded by a lot of gas and dust. In reality, if you look closer, the star in the center is actually spitting gas and dust out, a process known as mass loss. Eta Carina is currently experiencing huge mass loss processes, giving away something like one solar mass every 100,000 years. This happens to all supergiant stars. Their core collapses and generates energy that drives the outer atmosphere of the star into space, resulting in this incredible mass loss we detect. The most massive stars can lose a third to half of their total material into interstellar space. Isn't it amazing? Hey, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This would help us improve the quality of our videos. Thanks. If the Sun was a white dwarf, so far we've replaced the Sun with red and blue stars, and we were able to tell what would happen in such cases. But these are not the only stars present in the universe. For example, what if the Sun was replaced by a white dwarf? This is a really interesting question to ask because, well, after becoming a red giant, the Sun will turn into one of these tiny, cute white dwarfs. The Sun as a red giant would fuse helium and heavier elements before shedding its outer layers and forming a planetary nebula. What would remain is a white dwarf with around half the mass of our current yellow Sun. As the Sun loses mass, the outer planets like Jupiter would drift outwards, causing disruptions in asteroid orbits. The future white dwarf solar system would look very different from the present day, with little left of the inner planets. But some things won't change. Jupiter's orbit may have receded, but it remains a planetary heavyweight that can cause disruptions in asteroid orbits. Over millions of years, asteroids may be thrown out of the solar system or pushed closer to the new white dwarf Sun. Resonances in the asteroid belt will amplify and Kirkwood gaps will widen, making more asteroids available to be tidally disrupted and shredded to dust. We know all these things because scientists at NASA ran a bunch of simulations to predict what will happen in the future. White dwarfs may seem cute and tiny, but they are incredibly dense with a teaspoon of white dwarf material weighing about as much as an elephant. They also have a limit to their mass beyond which they can no longer support themselves against gravity and explode in a supernova. This explosion can be brighter than an entire galaxy and can create neutron stars and black holes. If the sun ever becomes a white dwarf, it would likely be a tiny sparkling jewel, but would cause destruction and a complete change of equilibrium in the solar system. If the sun was a neutron star, now imagine a giant monster with a pull so strong that it's two billion times stronger than anything you've ever felt. This monster is called a neutron star, and if we were to replace the sun with it, the planets in our solar system would be in big trouble. The gravitational force of a neutron star is so strong that it would tear planets apart, pulling them towards the monster until they were completely destroyed. The debris left behind would form an accretion disk around the neutron star like a ring of dust and rubble. If the neutron star was far away from an object, the pull would be weaker, but the closer it got, the stronger the forces would become. If we replace the sun with a neutron star, life on Earth would be impossible because the monster's pull would be too strong for us to survive. But it's not just neutron stars that we need to worry about. When a massive star dies, it can turn into a neutron star or a black hole. If we replace the sun with a dying star that became a red giant, the inner planets would get too close and be starved of the heat and light they need to survive. Eventually, when the star explodes and collapses, the planets would be flung out of the solar system. So in short, the fate of the solar system would be pretty grim if we replaced the Sun with a neutron star. It's important to remember that even though the Sun may seem small compared to other stars, it's just the right size to sustain life on Earth. If the Sun was a black hole, First off, if the sun suddenly turned into a black hole, we would all be toast. It's like if your favorite artist suddenly stopped making music. Total devastation. But let's take a step back. 
For the sun to become a black hole in the usual way, it would have to be a massive star, so big that Earth would be swallowed up and we'd be turned into a hot plasma. Yikes, that's like being trapped in a fiery inferno. Now let's say we're somehow outside of the star when it implodes into a black hole. This would cause a massive explosion called a supernova, and if we were unlucky enough to be caught in the blast zone, we'd be ripped apart atom by atom. That's like being in the middle of a war zone, nothing but desolation and destruction. But what if the sun just magically turned into a black hole of the same mass? Well, we'd still be orbiting it, but without the sun's radiation, we'd freeze solid. That's like being stranded in the middle of a snowstorm with no hope of rescue. But wait, there's a tiny glimmer of hope. If the black hole sun were to gobble up Mercury, the electrons from the planet would scream out in agony, emitting gamma radiation and x-rays that could potentially cook us before we freeze to death. That's like being in the middle of a crazy science experiment gone wrong. Again, total chaos and destruction. So there you have it. Let's just hope it never happens. In the end, the universe is full of wonders and dangers, and it's up to us to explore and learn from it. Just like how we grow and learn throughout our lives, stars also have their own journeys and transformations, and some places might be better for life to develop than others. But for now, let's enjoy our cozy spot orbiting around our bright yellow beach ball in the sky. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time on Insane Curiosity.